A golden fried egg takes the humble bean burrito to a whole other level. Corn, beans, spices, sour cream, cabbage, tomatoes. The perfect dish for a meatless Monday. My Aunt Sandra makes the best Mexican-inspired black beans. She's a weaver by trade, which means she has this incredible ability of weaving colors and textures together, not only at the loom, but also in the kitchen. And like in her kitchen, we are going to start by chopping an onion. Just going to use half an onion, peel away the skin. The special thing about Sandra's food is that she just is driven by color and flavor. And that means that sometimes you don't even notice that you're eating heavily vegetarian meals. You're not missing meat ever. And I love that about her food. Get your pan nice and hot. Little olive oil. The garlic. Skin off. Quick rough chop. Scoop it up and into the hot pan. Get these sizzling. Smells good already. You know, don't want the garlic to burn. Just turn it down a little bit. Not too high heat, just medium. And watch it. If it's really sizzling in the olive oil, turn it down a bit. Give it a stir. Let that dance away while I cut into my ever faithful cilantro. Now if you don't like cilantro, by all means, buy it anyway. Cut off the tops, leave the garnish, but use the roots because they have incredible flavor. And you'll probably find yourself eating something and saying, gosh, that tastes amazing. Why does it taste amazing? Because there's cilantro roots in there. Yeah. Cheeks off the red pepper. Easiest way to chop it by far. I'm going to chop the red pepper into little cubes, roughly the size of black beans, just to keep things relatively tidy in this dish. They're a little curvy, sometimes awkward to cut, so just do your best. Okay, I think I am just going to use half of this red pepper. Save the others for a little snack for later. Incidentally, peanut butter is strangely delicious on pepper. My other aunt makes peanut butter, green pepper sandwiches. I'm not joking. Pepper's in. But at this stage of cooking, the vegetables are just vegetables. We're going to turn them Mexican by spicing it up. The little coriander, dried coriander, and cumin. Cumin. Mm. It's nice to add the spices when the pan is relatively dry and hot. It really brings out their flavors. Chili powder. And adobo chili, which is a smoked jalapeno. And it is sold packed in adobo sauce. There are little seeds inside. Naturally, it is a jalapeno pepper, and that's where a lot of the heat is. So I'm just going to use half of what I've chopped. You can always add a little bit more later but it is hard to take the heat away. It smells amazing in here. Sandra's kitchen is coming alive. Really activated all those spices. Add some cider vinegar and you want the pan to be nice and hot to bring it to a really quick boil. Evaporate some of the excess liquid and then let the rest just simmer down into a lovely flavor. And a little honey to go with that counterbalance the tartness of the vinegar. The star of the dish, black beans. These are drained from a can, but by all means, please feel free to buy dried beans and soak them overnight if you have the time. I think it probably does make quite a big difference. I know Sandra would do that. Now we're crying out for another little pop of color. A little bit of corn. I know that Sandra probably designs her recipes based on color. She has a red kitchen as well. I'm sure she designs her food to match her kitchen. Of course she does. That's what I would do. You could add some vegetable stock to the beans at this stage and turn it into a soup. Eat them as is. 
roll them into a burrito, but I'm going to do something a little different. I am going to fry a beautiful sunny side up egg. Okay, get your pan nice and hot. Swirl the olive oil around. There's something about a fried egg cooked in olive oil. It just creates a really neat, lacy, crispy white rim that I love. It's really simple pleasures here in this dish. Mmm. Hot. All right, eggs are crying out for salt. Woo, it's alive. And some pepper, because it's so pretty on the yolk. I can't help myself. When the top of the egg is no longer translucent, it's ready. You could flip it over and cook the yolk if you wanted to, but I'm gonna go for a beautiful sunny side up. I have rolled all of this together up into a tortilla and made a thick burrito with egg inside, which is delicious absolutely an option, but today I have tostadas and I am craving a salty, crispy crunch. I'll spoon this on and around the tostada, avoiding this very jumpy egg beneath my arm. In Mexican cooking, they use this really nice fresh sheep's milk cheese called queso fresca. It's hard for me to find where I live, so I just make my own using a little feta and sour cream or Greek yogurt, and it does the trick. And a nice little addition is to add some grated lime zest. Smells so good. And spoon it on the dish. A little more cracked pepper, because it looks so pretty on the white, and it tastes good too, of course. And the optional garnish, but I insist on it, cilantro. This dish just fulfills all of my culinary requirements. Color and texture and flavor all woven together in one fantastic meal. A little queso fresca. Yolk is drippy and messy, and you just have to embrace it. The yolk is not meant to go all over your apron because then everyone knows that you were eating in the kitchen. But who cares? When it tastes that good, you just gotta tuck in, you know? Just go for it. Cooking with colorful ingredients is a natural way to add personality to your plate. And it's healthy. Healthy by accident, hey, why not? Ciao, Bean Burrito.